I was very nervous going into this because a lot of you have told me like this book ain't shit, but I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> and listen, I loved it. <laughs> So, a theme I've seen on YouTube across the last couple of years is people getting like cameos from celebrities or video requests from celebrities and like making a video out of it. It's across the all kind of areas of YouTube, this is a thing. And one day I just thought to myself, well, I could do that. <laughs> I thought about it and I knew I didn't want it to just be like celebrities or whatever. I wanted a distinct category. And if you watch my videos a lot, you will know that I love drag and drag queens. And so I thought, I'm gonna get drag queens to tell me what their favorite books are. Yes! <laughs> Yes! So what I've done is I have asked three of my favorite drag queens that are on Cameo what their favorite books are, okay? <laughs> And we're gonna get those videos back. Oh my god, I'm so excited. And we're gonna see what their favorite books are and then we're gonna read them in this video. We're gonna read Drag Queen's favorite books, essentially. And I am just so excited. I'm a bit nervous. I feel like, oh my god, what if they like, I don't know, what if, what if their books are like something I've already read or I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I've asked three of them for the video. So let's just see what the first Drag Queen said. Okay, so we have our first one back. <laughs> The first one is from Willem. So when I was choosing which drag queens to request cameos from, I wanted to choose ones that are like gonna give us something. Do you know what I mean? That are gonna be funny or just like give us something in the video. You don't want you want to be paying this money for a video and the drag queen just be like, hi, you know what I mean? You want a little bit of something, something. So we've gone for Willem first, and I'm honestly scared, but let's find out what Willem's favourite book is and what we're gonna be reading, I guess. Oh my god, I'm so nervous! I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, I You should be. Hey, Megan, you bookish bitch. Ah! <laughs> well, I, I need that to be. I mean, that's gonna be my new try. Hey, Megan, you bookish bitch. Ah! Okay, 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 okay. Let me just watch the video this time. Okay. I wanted to tell you about my favorite book. Yes! They're right here. This first one is called Suck Less. <laughs> Where there's a Willem, there's a way. It's all about sucking less. Mm -hmm. um, how you can <laughs> fix your vision with balls. I'm gonna have to blur that for YouTube, oh my God. Pretty things. Not as pretty as me. Actually, as pretty as me because I'm in here. Um, there's humble brag sections, how to get out of a DUI, how okay. to cover a cold sore, mm -hmm. um, how to... Uh, uh, how to get do the right drugs and not fall out. Um, what else? There's Halloween costumes. Ooh, I, I do that. I fist some guy in it. So there's lots of instructions. I also support women authors. So this is my second favorite book. It's Becoming oh, by Michelle okay. Obama. It was really, really good. I didn't know as much about her as I, as I liked. And her book, I actually liked it better than Brock's. Brock's was great, but there were way too many basketball references in it. And I was like, Brock, calm down. We get it. Your mask. But um, yeah. Uh, I like both of those books. Michelle's has less typos, though. I will guarantee you that. So I hope your pussy's popping severely. And if it's not, um, talk to your doctor. Bye. What? What? That is the most bizarre experience of my life. <laughs> okay, I feel like mm, I'm not like able to talk. <laughs> So, I have read Becoming. I have read Becoming by Michelle Obama, and I agree, I gave it five stars. I absolutely love Becoming by Michelle Obama. I recommend it a lot. I think it's a really interesting book. And I do want to reread the audio book at some point, but I don't know. I feel like it's still a bit soon. Like, I feel like in a couple years or so, I would like to reread the audio book. Um, I haven't read Barack Obama's book. I assume what I'm referring to is it The Promised Land. But actually, me and Tom are like, it's on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads at the moment because me and Tom are like kind of reading it together a little bit so I don't know if I'll read that so maybe I should read Willem's book Suck Less maybe we'll read that that'll be fun I feel like that'll be really really fun so we'll, I guess we're gonna read that for Willem's pick because I've read Becoming but Willem gets a point in a sense because I gave Becoming five stars so I agree that would if I hadn't read it it would have been a success for this video Oh, oh my god, this is like the best thing I've ever done in my life. Our next video has just come through, and this one is from Thorgy Thor. <laughs> so, listen, an icon, a legend, I really love Thorgy. One of my favourite memes to use on the channel. Uh, Jesus. 
gross. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Gross. And again, I feel like Thorgy's gonna give us something. Thorgy's gonna give us a good video. So I'm nervous, but I'm I'm really, really excited. Okay, let's get into it. Hi! <laughs> Thorgy Thor here. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, RuPaul's Drag Race Season 8 and All Stars 3, TLC's Dragnificent, Thorchy, and the Thorchestra Baby. Yes! Uh, and a million other things. Anyway, so uh, Megan reached out to me. Uh, so I'm talking to you, Megan, and everyone who's listening. Uh, so this is a reading vlog. Yeah. So I thought I would talk about a little bit about uh, how crazy I am, but also um, <laughs> my favorite books that I've been reading uh, recently. Okay. And uh, the first one is 101 Pooh Poems by Dr. Deuce. Which my nine-year-old nephew uh, gave to me um, for Christmas. And I'd like to read one for you right now. It's called No to Three. And here we go. One poop is great. Two poops is fine. But three poops? I hate. It just crosses the line. He's nine, so whatever. But uh, also, in all seriousness, and on uh, an intellectual level, uh, this book has always been my favorite book. It's Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I've read it a bunch of times. Oh my God. You can tell, this is old. I always love how the old pages smell. Anyway, uh, but this was just an amazing uh, journey that I always followed and always read uh, every couple of years. And uh, I, I hope you enjoy it too. So that's gonna be my recommendation, and I love you very much. Also, any books by Shel Silverstein any poems and I love you. Cheers. Bye, Megan. <laughs> Kiss my butt. Bye. <laughs> okay. You guys, this is so cool. I can't get over how cool it's to have these videos. It's so weird. It's so weird. Anyway. Oh, um, so listen, we had a good poo poem. <laughs> okay. So I guess I'm going to be reading, what is it? The motorcycle book? Zen? I can't remember. I've heard the title. Zen Mm, whatever. I'll watch it and I'll buy it. And I guess we're gonna read that. I have, I don't know what it's about. I just always heard people talk about the title. But that's obviously a book Thorgy has read and read and read. Like read and read and read. You can tell. So like that makes me nervous. Like obviously I've asked my favorite books, but like it makes me so nervous. Like what if I hate them? Uh <laughs> anyway, that's another book we're gonna be reading. So so far we've got Suck Less and The Motorcycle Book. <laughs> Okay, our last one has just come through, and this one is from Alexis Mateos. Sick me no. <laughs> Sick me no. So I would say Alexis Mateos was one of my first like favorite drag queens because I watched the series like in order. I did, obviously like I think series two came out when I was like ten or some shit, not ten, but you know when I was really young. So um, I didn't watch them at the time, but I did watch the series in order when I watched the show. To be fair, Shangela and Alexis Mateo were my favorites on season three, but I just I loved Alexis. Like I loved all her catchphrases. Like I I also I also think she's one of the sweetest, like kindest drag queens out there, and I feel like she'll have a good book recommendation. So I'm really excited to see what she's gonna say. So. Let's watch our final video. Oh my god. I actually feel sick watching these though. I feel so nervous. Okay. Hello, Megan. Hello. It's me, Alexis Mateo. And oh my god, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see your blog. I'm gonna check it out now. Um Thanks. but yes, let me talk to you about my favorite books. Woo. First one is The Secret, of course, because I really like um readings that help me with my personal life. Okay. And that one always explain to you how you can manifest things to the universe mm -hmm. in order to get them and how to replace negativities in your brain into positive. So yeah, The Secret is one of my favorite books. And of course, because I'm Latino, La Llamarada from Enrique Laguerre is one of my favorite books ever. I read it when I was in high school and I still have it. So check it out if you speak Spanish. If it's not, make sure you get a translator for this one, baby. Anyways, I love you. Keep it cute. Keep it sickening now. Bam. Oh my god oh my god i love it okay so we have two options there we have the secret and we have what was the other book i think it's called the flare up i think so i'll see if i can find like an english translated version for that and i guess we'll either read both of them or we'll pick one of them i guess we'll see but oh my god okay so let me go away get the books and, I'll, and I'll, we'll just talk quickly about what we're gonna read before we actually get into reading the video. Okay, I have gone and secured the goods. So we have the books. So first I am going to read Suck Less, where there's a Willem, there's a way. I think it's gonna be fun. It's like, I've gotta be careful of what I flip through this because I'm gonna have to blur like 
<laughs> the video that Willem sent. But it's like kind of self help kind of stuff. Like covering skin problems. Okay. How to do makeup. Stuff like that. I think it's like a self helpy kind of book. So we're going to read that. Then we have, I found out what the title was <laughs> Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by. Robert M. Persig. I don't really understand what this is. I think it's like a self-helpy book, but it's fiction. It's a story of the narrator and his son and their month-long motorcycle odyssey from Minnesota to California. And it's like a look at life, I think. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. This is like never the kind of book that I would have picked up and it's quite long. It's like 400 pages. I am really uncomfortable right now and I'm feeling like I want to get up and leave. So I'm a bit nervous about reading it. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. I don't know. I don't know how well me and this are gonna get along. So it definitely isn't the kind of thing I'd ever pick up. But listen, Thorgy obviously read this like a billion times. For Alexis, I could not find for the life of me an English translation of the flare up. I looked literally on every bookish website. <laughs> you could imagine and i just couldn't find an english translation anywhere i don't know if it, if it even exists which i'm kind of sad about because it sounded really interesting so we are just going to read the secret for alexis's pick and i've always his thing i kind of always said to myself i was never going to read this because i just didn't think it, its way of thought necessarily aligned with mine <laughs> So I'm a bit nervous, but yeah, I guess we're just gonna, we're gonna go ahead and give it a go. We're gonna give it a go. I think I'm actually gonna start with this because it's not very long, so I don't feel intimidated by it. And I've got the audio book and I'm kind of intrigued as to what I'm actually gonna think of it. So we're gonna start with this one. And I feel like this one is the most perhaps well-known books out of all these. So maybe you'll be more interested in what I think. I don't know. But also can we talk about why, why are we all obsessed with self-help books? <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. Why well, couldn't one of you, I suppose, Motorcycle maintenance is fiction, but I wanted like, do none of you read like mysteries, fantasies, horror, even romances? Like, <laughs> why for these celebrity videos do I always, always read self help? Anyways, let's let's just go start it. <laughs> Okay, so I am halfway through The Secret. <laughs> and I was not I was very nervous going into this because a lot of you have told me like, this book ain't shit. Like a lot, when I said I was gonna read it, a lot of you were like, go on, go on. <laughs> yeah, I was really nervous going into it, but I don't hate it. So basically, if, you're, if you don't know, The Secret is essentially the law of attraction. So the whole point of this book is telling you you can achieve anything you want if you basically believe you've already achieved it or think positive thoughts and whatever. And I, I think there's some truth to that, right? Like, I think there's some truth to if you are thinking positively and are thinking really, you're really focused on your goals, then you're probably are more likely, not definitely going to achieve them, but you're more likely to achieve them. And if you're thinking negatively, if you're in a negative headspace, if you're anxious about a lot of things, that's less likely to happen. I know that's true in my own life when you get into certain funks in your mood and there's also then certain times when everything's going great and you feel so lucky and you just feel like you just keep kind of achieving what you would want to achieve. But I, I don't know if I necessarily believe in it in that it's like guaranteed <laughs> essentially if you like truly truly believe you've already got that car then you're gonna get that car within a certain amount of time but I think you know what I've tried really hard with this book and what I'm still trying to do with when, when I'm reading it is to not just switch off to it you know because I think with stuff like this if I just go into it with the opportunity that it's entirely bullshit and I don't believe in any of it then it's a waste of my time like what what is genuinely the point of me reading it what is the point of me coming here and vlogging about it if from the beginning I go into it thinking it's mumbo jumbo it's not real it doesn't work like what you know who, who am I to say that you know I don't know I'm not psychic and also who am I to really say what I think of this book if I don't put it into practice if I don't try <laughs> what it's saying because like when I've had problems with other like self-help or like spiritual books like the four agreements I didn't really like that much for example I felt like it was just ideas that didn't really amount to much but this is like a way to live your life that kind of suggest you're going to achieve certain things and who am I to say oh it's bullshit if I don't try that do you know what I mean I don't think I can really say that even if I think certain things about it if I don't actually try and implement it because like 
otherwise you don't know. This could hold the secret alive, and I just don't know. But I will say, reading it, I do, you know, it does feel outdated. Like, there's a whole section on losing weight, and it's like, you gotta think thin. <laughs> you gotta think thin thoughts. And you can't look at fat people. <laughs> if you see a fat person, stop looking at them. Which is like, I mean, come on, girl. I mean, it's very 2006. 2006 chick films, magazines, they all had, like, kind of, you know, obviously this is a more, like, spiritual version of that, but they all kind of had that attitude. But it does have flaws in it in like it says anything that anything bad that happens to you is your fault you you basically bore that onto yourself and in some ways i mean there's in minor parts of that perhaps i do agree with that if you are in a negative headspace consistently i know this i mean i'm only speaking on personally what happens to me if i'm in a negative headspace things start falling apart and it's easier to sit in that negative headspace and break out of it basically but, you know, when terrible things are happening in the world right now, like they are in Ukraine, for example, like, can I, can you say that that's like, you can't say that people have bought that on themselves and all they need to do is picture themselves with money or with, or truly believe that they have their house back and it will, be, it will happen. Like, that's not the way that life works. And do I really think the book is trying to say that? Or if someone's murdered, they bought it upon themselves or whatever. I don't. I mean, at least I hope not. I hope that's what I was trying to say. But it's very easy to bend what they're saying into that. Because it does say anything negative that happens to you is your fault. And I think that is where this book falls apart. Is is with the, yeah, the bad things that happen in your life are a direct consequence of your actions and of your thoughts, you know? And that's just not true when there's so many moving parts in the world. And this says, like, you know, when you think the way you do, the universe will make that happen or whatever. And I just don't agree with that aspect of it. But I feel like this book is written for people with fairly safe lives. Safe lives that they maybe feel a bit disillusioned by. Do I think that this could work for people like that? Probably. Like, I think if you think, if you're in that kind of situation where, like, outside factors aren't necessarily affecting your life in a negative way, if you're benefiting from outside factors in your life, do I think that thinking positively can work, perhaps? And do I think in my own life, if I were to implement stuff like this, and I think if, well, I think if you have belief in yourself, which is what this whole book's about in terms of work, in terms of life, in terms of relationships, I think that does have an effect. So I think on a personal level, Yes, there are things that you can take away from this, but I think the theory as a whole, there's there's some there's, there's aspects of it that take away from it as a whole. Does that make sense? I hope so. So I finished The Secret and I have I have such mixed feelings about it. I have such contradictory feelings about it that I really don't want to say to you. Also, my window's open. I hope that's not annoying. <laughs> it's spring, it's spring. Anyway, this is a reason to celebrate. Here's the thing, right? This book, I think there's a lot about it that is very beneficial on a personal level. I think it can really give you that, like, kick up the arse to think positively, to, to aspire for what you want, to believe you can achieve what you want. And I think when you are in that headspace, things do come more naturally. You achieve things, your life's better, your life's on this kind of flow. But I don't know if it's, some of its wider ideas <laughs> are very good. I got particularly annoyed when it's talking about like the world section where it talks a lot about war. And you know, that's obviously very applicable to our current situation in the world. It talks about how when there's a conflict in the world, we shouldn't like talk about it in the news or read about it or like pay attention to it because that feeds, that gives the conflict energy and makes it continue on for longer. There's certain times you read this and you just think that's a bit of a affluent, sheltered view of life. You know what I mean? In that regard, I don't enjoy it. But I do think on a personal level, it has some teachings in it that are beneficial for people to implement in their life. You know, the whole thing about losing weight, don't look at fat people, like, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, there's a lot about this book <laughs> that makes you go like, what? Oh, there's this whole bit when talking about attracting money, she talks about whenever she got a bill, she would like, she wouldn't let herself open it until she believed it was a check. And she'd like dance and go, I'm so thankful for my checks. And she'd add an extra zero onto the number and be like, oh, I'm so, I've got so much money. And then she started getting so many checks in the mail out of nowhere. And like, just stuff like that, I was like, girl, girl, girl. <laughs> but I think when it comes to a particularly like attitude towards life for like entrepreneurs and stuff, I can see where people who are more self-employed on a bit of like a hustle kind of mindset 
are into this because I think at its core it does have some valuable insights for the individual person. So that's my that's my view on it. There's a lot of it about it that annoyed me, but there's also a lot about it that I could see the value in. So I can see, like, I feel like this book, often people are out here giving it like five stars, it changed my life, or one stars, this is like ridiculous. And I'm, I gave it three stars and I generally can see both sides and I think both sides are very valid. <laughs> and I can understand both people's opinions. So that is my opinion on The Secret. Now I am gonna start suck less by Willem. <laughs> right, so... <laughs> I finished Suck Less. I didn't love it. <laughs> I didn't love it and I feel bad. I mean, Willem's A not gonna watch this video and B not gonna care what I think, but like I still feel bad because you're like, Willem's in this video and I'm like, yeah, mm giving it two stars. <laughs> so, okay, here's the thing. I think it's a very different reading experience. I felt it difficult to separate myself from like being like a booktuber or book reviewer when reading this. I think if you're someone who like very rarely reads or is just a fan and doesn't have to have like, you know, when I'm reading a book, I'm constantly thinking like, what am I gonna say about this? What am I actually thinking about it? Rather than just having like a passive reading experience. And I think that for me, is what I didn't enjoy about it. I didn't feel like the book was particularly structured well. I don't think that's Willem's fault because Willem isn't like a author. I feel like the publishing house, whatever the team behind this book, I didn't feel like the structure of like this kind of self-help thing actually, it didn't continue throughout necessarily. It wasn't sustained. I feel like I would have much preferred like a memoir or something, but this book felt like it constantly like, we couldn't be sincere at any point. Like, it was just constantly trying to be funny. Do you know what I mean? I also think, I mean, this whole book, I mean, Willem is kind of like, the dark humour isn't the right word, probably, but like controversial humour, right? And this book has that, and you go into it expecting it. But I just think, like, reading it isn't the best form to, to consume it in. And something that I kind of struggled with and kind of actually made me switch off from the book at halfway. Halfway up to that, it was probably like a 3.5. I was quite enjoying it. And then at about the halfway point, there's like a lot of chapters kind of joking about eating disorders and like vaguely encouraging them and like, yeah, explaining like the methodology behind eating disorders. And I just felt very uncomfortable reading that and found it like of triggering is the right word but you know like it, it made me uncomfortable and I didn't really want to read it and then from that point onwards I was kind of switched off the book I'm gonna be honest the last like 20 pages I just skimmed it I didn't, I didn't really read it so if like you're someone who that wouldn't bother go ahead and read it I think if you're a fan of Willem go ahead and read it it's got good reviews but for me that section just like hit a nerve <laughs> and then it meant my experience the rest of the book wasn't is good. I'm not gonna go into detail about what is said because I don't think that's like responsible for me and like, you know, my audience, but um, yeah, it just made me uncomfortable. And it also just felt like very, like this book came out in 2016. So it would have been written in like 2015. And the problem with like contemporary, contemporary romances have this as well. The problem with these kind of books is it is written to be read when it comes out. Right, so the humor, I don't really love humor books, but the humor in this was of its time. And you can tell that you can, I mean, like 2015 is seven years ago now. Like I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. Like you think 2015, you don't think it's that long ago, but that's seven years ago. And there is a marked difference as to what humor is in and what humor is out <laughs> from 2015 to now if that makes sense i will say perhaps i think i would have enjoyed it more had i had the audiobook i just think william's humor you have to like hear said otherwise it doesn't land if it's your own voice in your head saying it so yeah i gave it two stars <laughs> i'm sorry i'm so sorry i feel really bad i feel really bad but yeah, it just wasn't for me and I just found it difficult to reconnect with the book. But anyway, we're gonna read the final book now, which is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I'm scared about. I was actually speaking to my patrons about this and they reminded me that Kayla from Books and Lala gave it one star. I completely forgot she'd read it. I actually, like, I'd watched the video where she read it. I just, obviously, I didn't really know the book, so I think I didn't make the link. And she gave it one star, so I'm really mad. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get maybe like halfway through that today. I don't really want to spend that long reading it. I'd rather just like get it out of the way quick. Guys. I hate it. I fucking hate it. I f <laughs> Life could be worse.
No, not really. Beyond hate it. Like, I was only going to check in with you halfway through. I'm only 100 pages in. I'm already like, mm mm. Can't do this. Can't fucking do this. I wasn't even, I wasn't expecting to speak to you tonight, evidently. But. Fuck this book. Genuinely, ugh, out the window. I can't. I can't. I, got, I can't read this. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Firstly, I don't understand anything. Anything. There is no reading comprehension going on here. I'm just reading words at this point. Like, what is the fucking point of this? It's pretentious. Sorry, this isn't any shade, Thorgy. Don't take this personally. Don't take this personally. So essentially, we're following this dude on a motorcycle. <laughs> Fucking, it's giving me a headache. On a motorcycle journey um, with some friends and with his son and it's kind of the story of their journey alongside some like philosophical life advice essentially. And this dude, he's like, I know the secret to life. I know the secret to happiness. I understand everything in the world, but you fucking idiots don't know a thing. You don't know a thing, but I get it. And I'm the only one and it's, uh, <laughs> I actually, I can't take it. I never DNF. And especially not for video, for not for vlogs, right? Especially when it's a vlog like this, which I've been like, <laughs> this vlog I've been gearing up to do for months and I've been so excited to do it. And the fact that I'm now like, I, I generally can't read this. We can end this phone call right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do, you guys. I never DNF, but like, I've been in such a bad reading slump and this is just putting me more into one. Like, I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate the narrator. I hate the structure of the story, like how we're flitting back and forth between like him talking about putting his motorcycle back together and then some fucking weird philosophical thing that I just don't understand. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't read very intellectual things. Sorgi called this intellectual. I don't read intellectual things. I don't read classics. I don't read like shit like that. I'm here for a good time. Not a long time. <laughs> I think I'm a bit young. This is no shade. No shade. No shade. <laughs> I think I'm a bit young to be reading this. Like, I think this is the kind of book you don't want to read until, like, your late 20s at a max. Because it is this guy who has, like, is looking back on life and is, like, figuring stuff out. And I I just can't relate. And I my brain is like, what the fuck? Like, this, this concept is, like, fake. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I hate the way he's acting towards his son. I just hate the way he talks. But I don't want to let you down by not reviewing this book. Like, what the fuck? Like, other people DNF, they're like, whoop, DNF. Like, it's so easy. But, like, I, <laughs> I paid money to Thorgy Thor to recommend me this book. And then I'm like, no, I'm not reading this shit. <laughs> but I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. You lost me, dude. You've lost me. So I really want to DNF this. I just want to, I don't want to read it anymore. But I feel like I'm failing you in the vlog if I DNF it. So I'm going to, I'm going to get to at least halfway. I'm going to get to at least page 200. So another 200 pages, which is actually over halfway. And then we'll see. But if I'm still not enjoying it by then, I think I am just going to quit. And I think you guys can forgive me because I'm in an awful re um, reading slump. And I just like need happiness in my life. And life's too short, you know? So I'll see you in the morning. I'm going to try and read the 100 pages tonight so it doesn't bleed into any more of my life. <laughs> I DNF'd it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I read like 10 more pages. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it anymore. I'm sorry. It's a no from me. I just genuinely wasn't understanding anything. I wasn't connecting to the book. I don't want to talk about it that much more because I, I don't like dunking on like a book that obviously has changed people's lives, including it's been a big inspiration for Thorgy. Like I was like, oh my God, Thorgy, I failed you. But like, it's one thing talking about a fiction book that you didn't like, but it's another thing talking about a book that obviously a lot of people, you know, have taken inspiration from and insight from. And I just think I'm genuinely not in the right place in my life to be reading this. It's not my kind of thing. Thing. it's just a no from me and like I could feel <laughs> I'm so deep in a slump right now if I tried to finish this book I would genuinely never read a book again it would be the end of my channel you would never see me again like I can't do it my heart is saying no so it was an act of self-care um to not finish this book because I just yeah no nope, not for me sorry but I felt bad about this right and so I went back on Thorgy's video and at the end Thorgy recommends any poems by oh my god I forgot the name Shel Silverstein and so I went on script I found like a pdf of the giving tree by Shel Silverstein and listen 
I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. This is like a poem or a children's book and I gave it five stars. I loved it. I cried this morning when I read it. It took me like literally two minutes to read it. By the way, I'm counting that, which took me two minutes to read towards my Goodreads goal and I'm counting this towards my Goodreads goal. I don't care. Usually when I DNF, I don't, but what this put me through is a valid, you know, it's valid. I don't care what anyone says. Anyway. They put me through purgatory. Yeah. Mm. They put me through hell on this earth. Anyway, back to the giving tree. I absolutely loved it. It's basically a story of this boy and this tree who love each other and like the tree gives to him. And it was just beautiful. It just made me cry. I think it's a gorgeous you know, book for children or people of any age really. And I just absolutely loved it. So listen, Thorgy is out here with a five star and a one star. <laughs> Who could have predicted it? And to be fair, Willem recommended Becoming, which was a five star for me as well. So although the books I read in this video weren't super successful, apart from that little bit of the giving tree at the end, which is difficult to talk about because it's literally like 10 pages. <laughs> yeah, we had some success in it. Um, I just would really recommend everyone, like just go out and read the giving tree. It will take you two seconds and it's just gorgeous. And I really, I really want to try more of his poems out because um, they kind of all seem to be in that vein. It was just absolutely so touching and just so like poignant and just oh it made me cry it made me cry like I was not expecting that I was like let's go read this so listen Thorgy pulled through in the end I just obviously had picked the wrong thing <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below what you thought of it who your favorite drag queens are there are other drag queens I would love to do this with again in the future if you want to see it um obviously not all my favorite drag queens are on cameo and also some of them listen Shangela <laughs> The price is too high. I can't do it. I can't justify it. But let me know if there's any people you would like to see on this. Go on Cameo and have a look who's on there and tell me who would you most like to see and keep my, my bank account in mind, please. <laughs> I really enjoyed doing this video. It was so much fun to get those videos. Like it was absolutely just amazing. It was really great. Like I never imagined I could do something like that, but it was really fun to hear them give me book recommendations. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below. I upload Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays with bookish videos. And if you got to the end of this video, comment a lipstick emoji. Um, so yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.